Well, it's happening again. Social media lighting up saying that the season is a bust. We're talking about hurricane season, of course. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. I wish that was going to be the case. I hope that the forecasts that were issued preseason are going to bust, but it's likely not going to happen. So we're going to break down why everybody's thinking that the season is busting already, only being in the middle of July. We're going to talk about why it has been so quiet post-hurricane barrel, and we're going to talk about later on in this video why that's actually a bad thing so stick around for that and then of course we're going to look ahead into the month of august and i'm going to show you why unfortunately that it's likely not going to stay quiet for much longer before we get into this video and some of these stats that you see popping up on your screen if you want to stay updated on the rest of hurricane season and if you love the weather in general come hang out with us hit that subscribe button give this video a thumbs up post in the comments where you were tuning in from i would love to know where you're watching from. All right, so here we go. We're talking about averages, and this is why it's not been a bust and why it's likely not going to be. So the first time we typically see a hurricane develop, it's not until August 11th. Well, we've already had the first hurricane and first major hurricane and first Cat 5 hurricane of the season. The first hurricane was Barrel, of course, that formed on June 29th. So we are way ahead of schedule. Now, the fourth name storm of the season typically doesn't come around until about August 15th. So again, we're three storms in. We have another almost month to get that fourth storm, and we likely will see that prior to that. In terms of accumulated cyclone energy, that's the ACE number. That's when you take the intensity of the season. Once the storm becomes a tropical storm and greater, we're typically having an ACE of just under six. We are at 36 Point one three. Now, of course, most of that was generated by a barrel, but you catch my drift that we are way ahead in that department as well. We're coming in at number two to date when we're looking at ACE to date. Of course, number one was way back in 2005 where we had an, just a ridiculous value of 49.18. That was, of course, uh, the most intense season or the second most intense season on record. 1933 is the most intense in terms of ACE. 36.13 is where we stand right now, putting us way ahead of number three, four, and five. So again, way ahead of schedule. We are supposed to be quiet at this point. This is climatologically speaking, one of the quietest times in hurricane season over that June through November time frame. I always tell people, if you're trying to book a cruise and take advantage of some of those summer deals, because a lot of times there are deals, because it is, of course, hurricane season, the second week and third week of July are your best bet to do so. Now, it's not always working out like that. Of course, back in 2005 was one of those examples. Nonetheless, this is typically one of the quietest times. You see it here on the chart. Now, this is uh, the climatology that we see tropical development and we are that purple little icon right there right smack dab in the middle of july you see what is left to come the meat and potatoes of the season the peak of hurricane season doesn't occur until september 10th we're considered peak season really through the month of october so again there is a long way to go first and foremost but you see the activity is on the lower side climatologically speaking we're getting rid of those homegrown storms that typically happen in June, early July, that form out of the Central American gyre and those cold fronts off the United States mainland. And then we're transitioning to those long track storms. Barrel was the exception. We've already seen one of those again uh, that form off of Africa and move across the Atlantic Ocean. The other thing is, and why it's typically quiet, we are at peak season when it comes to the Saharan dust. And it is prolific. It got off to a slow start but it has been prolific for the last couple of weeks, and it is certainly uh, there are a lot of there's a lot of dust out there. The darker the brown on this map, the thicker the dust, and you clearly see we have a lot of it around Bermuda, a lot of it around Puerto Rico. Another round coming through, and all of this is going to work its way back up into the southeast U.S., getting into the upcoming weekend. And there is more to come and eject out over to the Atlantic Ocean. So that is the other reason why it's quiet. The third thing is the Madden Julian oscillation. We talked about the MJO at length on this channel on how it can enhance tropical development. Barrel was born out of that enhancement. And they can also suppress it as well by inducing the basin that it's not in 
with a lot of sinking air. In order to get thunderstorm development, you need the air to rise. So there are three things currently working against the Atlantic Basin. We expected this. We talked about this weeks ago, that after Barrel, we would likely see the season go on an extended vacation before a likely unfortunate flurry of activity. So again, don't let your guard down all of the above. We're going to get into that in just one second. We're going to talk about how active August can be coming up in just one second. Before we get into that, if you do want to stay updated on the tropics with sound science and meteorology and none of the garbage that is out there saying that all those preseason forecasts are busting, you have to hit subscribe for one, but there's another way to stay updated as well. Every Monday, I send out a Tropics Watch newsletter. Head to clickorlando.com slash newsletters. You can sign up for free. We have a bunch of newsletters at uh, clickorlando.com. We are based out of Orlando. That's why our website is that. Uh, scroll down, find Tropics Watch. Put your uh, email in there. It's free to sign up. Uh, would love to have you hang out with us in that way as well. And of course, if you want to hit me up on the social channels, there are all of the platforms that I am active on uh, and post a lot and answer questions. And of course, if you want to comment in this video as well, I am very responsive to those comments. All right. I mentioned earlier in the video that it's not necessarily a good thing that we are so quiet. Now, you might be wondering why I might say such a crazy thing of course we don't want storms and believe me i am the first one to tell you i would love it if we saw no storms a year well that is not a reality the deal is we like when we have the weaker storms around in june and july maybe those ugly looking subtropical storms or those weak low-end tropical storms out in the caribbean because it helps to churn up the water and it helps to bring up that cooler water that resides under the surface and pull it back to the surface and limit some of the tropical fuel. Barrel did that work in the Gulf and the Caribbean to cool the water down. The water, though, has already recovered. Look at the anomalies here. It's crazy. The cooler anomalies that were east of the Antilles are gone completely. And the long track nature here... Um, a barrel has been wiped clean, unfortunately, and everything is juiced. Anywhere from a half a degree Celsius, that's going to be, you double it essentially for Fahrenheit, but anywhere out in the main development region, we're pushing three to four degrees Fahrenheit above normal. And anywhere, look at that, right off the coast of Florida, the Gulf Coast. Uh, so we do not want anything coming up in that part of the region. Now, I know it might seem when you talk about really any kind of temperature anomaly, oh, it's only a couple degrees Fahrenheit. It's the same deal as your body temperature. When you get a fever, more often than not, you're only a few degrees warmer than your normal temperature, 98.6. Well, you're pegging a fever, a low-end one at 100, 101. And then, of course, you're going to the hospital, really anything higher than that. So, again, just to add some perspective, this is crazy still. What's even crazier, look at the ocean heat content or essentially the tropical fuel here that we are working with. Look at how beet red it is. Again, I mean, we're pegging the extreme category here, the right side of this scale, as we're working through July 18th, 19th, 20th, that third week of July, it is crazy juiced. If we had a storm coming through anywhere from here, and especially the Caribbean, it's not going to be good news. Uh, same thing that happened with Barrel. We saw the rapid intensification several times east of the Caribbean, and then once it got into the Caribbean, uh, not good news at all for the remainder of the season. So that is the fuel that still remains. And again, the lower the storm count, the better environment that would remain for those storms in terms of that ocean heat content because we don't have that upwelling or that cooling. I mentioned the MJO. I, we use that a lot here. It's a, it's a good forecast tool. Again, it's that cluster of thunderstorms and clouds that goes around the globe every about 30 to 60 days, and it has different phases. And when it's in the phase for the Atlantic, you can expect an uptick of thunderstorms that could eventually turn into tropical systems. What I'm showing you here now is the 200 millibar uh, forecast over the next four, uh, over the next 40 days here. 
Where you see the green, we have anomalies of rising motion. And where you see the brown, we have sinking air anomalies. So when we would see the brown over the Atlantic Basin, we would typically forecast lower than normal or non-existent activity, depending upon how thick or how brown, how big the anomaly is. So what we're looking at here, this is going to be through July 18th. This is where we are. And if you can make out here, here is South America, here is Mexico, here is the Caribbean, here is Africa, okay? If you can see my mouse. Look at all the brown. We have widespread sinking air in play. It's the reason why there's hardly a cloud in the sky through the Caribbean. Okay, now we're going to fast forward out. This is through July 23rd. Even more brown. Okay, so we're still looking good. I still think we're going to be quiet. Then as we get into August, this is August 2nd. Maybe nothing really coming off of Africa just yet, but note that green. We start to get those positive anomalies, so we might start to have some shenanigans in the Gulf of Mexico, maybe the Western Caribbean, as we flip the calendar page into the first few days of August. And then we start to see that expand. Really, once we get to the second half of August and beyond, that is when that switch could flip. So here we go. This is now down here where my mouse is. If you see me going crazy, this is right here, August 7th. So now we're really starting. Okay. Antenna going up. MJO is entering again. We're likely going to see things respond to that over the next week or so beyond that. And then really here, that's going to be August 12th. And then August 17th, August 22nd, and then August 27th. Note the green passing from west to east. Again, so this is we can really induce that long track tropical system potential once we get beyond August 15th. You see that right there, and that'll continue through the third week of August. And we're likely uh, might go gangbusters here from the first week of August, really through the entire month. And then maybe as we get into the first week of September, uh, try to calm things back down again uh, for a little while before we try to do this all again maybe in October. Alrighty guys, I know it was a little amped up. I should probably stay off social media because it's the reason for this video just with the egregious claims that the season is over. I would love it to be over. Believe me, I would love it. Barrel was already devastating for so many of our friends in the Caribbean. Texas, parts of Mexico, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands. It was awful. We don't want any more of that. Unfortunately, it looks like there's much more to come, and August might be the mean part of the season as a whole. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, if you want to stay updated on the rest of the season, and if you want to get all the information without all the noise, without all the garbage, and if you want to learn a little bit of something, maybe learn some weather and some meteorology and some science, if you've come to the right place, hit that subscribe button for me, and we will catch you next time.